Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this uh, innocent looking but potentially dangerous module. This is a very small GPS tracker which measures just 13 by 22 millimeters if you leave out this uh, USB connection. I discovered this little guy a while ago when I saw some images in a Twitter post of uh, this particular tracker being embedded inside an iPhone 10. It was most likely a hobby type job because of how it looked and also because if any serious agency would want to spy on you they wouldn't need to implant something like this into your phone. They will just do it through other methods like a man in the middle attack or tap your calls straight from the operator network. But nonetheless this uh, looked interesting and as far as I have seen so far uh, this seems to be the uh, smallest tracker that you can buy online. Same as other trackers shown on this uh, channel, this is designed to connect to a uh, Chinese cloud service for tracking. It uses the same website as the other ones which is uh, 365gps.net and it probably comes with the same set of uh, problems or limitations as I have shown in previous videos. So this module can do GPS based tracking and report back via 2G network connectivity and the short wire here is a uh, GPS antenna while the long wire is the GSM antenna. But in those countries that have a shut off 2G network, you will not be able to use a tracker like this. This can also do audio recording. We can spot a very small microphone package in here, but you'll have to add an external SD card for that and the seller does provide a, a, a minimal wiring diagram which I will try to show on screen. It's fairly easy to imagine something like this uh, being hidden in pretty much any object that you see around you but be careful that will be 100% illegal pretty much anywhere in the world so you've been warned. But that doesn't mean you can't build useful stuff like something to track your dog movements or something to track a valuable object in case of theft and the list could go on. The link for this will be in the description below and if you're thinking of building your own circuit board around this GPS tracker check out the sponsor of this video PCBWay.com. They offer high quality professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times. During Chinese New Year, their factory stays open for a number of different services. Check out their website, link below for more information. My next item is a roll of a Velcro type band for cable management. And I use quite a lot of this stuff to keep my uh, cables wrapped nice and tidy. I was almost out of the previous pack I got, so I figured I order some more in advance and I might be moving the lab to a new space soon so I'll probably need a bunch uh, of these to do cable management but more on that in a separate video. Until then check out the link to this product in the description below the video and order yourself one of these. It will help you keep things nice and tidy. Next up here's something else which I got for cable management or actually for something like a cabinet wiring. Take for example a Netro gear cabinet or an electrical distribution board where you have multiple wires coming in. This type of name tag with uh, integrated zip tie can be a quick solution for markings on, on various cables. You can use a paint marker and write something directly to the small plastic tab or you can just uh, add small labels from the label printer. I'm not working on anything specific right now but I figured it would be useful to have these in my toolbox. I'll probably find a use for these at some point in some kind of work that I do. I often find myself trying to power a device for testing on my workbench but not having the right plug for a quick test so I ordered a few of these uh, DC jack to screw terminal connector which would allow me to do exactly that. So I think I got uh, 2.5 and 2.1 millimeter diameter and I have both female and male connectors in here. It's just one of those things which is useful to have for uh, quick testing on the workbench. Next up I have some VW type pin connectors and these are present on various internal modules like the gateway or ECU module and you can order them original from VW which would ensure you get a high quality connector or you can get them from AliExpress. These are probably a copy of the original and they are much cheaper than the OEM part. 
Now, if you plan on working on hobby projects, um, these replicas would probably work just fine. But if you do any kind of professional work installing systems on people's cars or fixing them, then I would probably go for the more expensive OEM part just so you get the guarantee of a high quality connector. I have in here both uh, female and male connectors and together with the connector housings which I got in a previous mailbag, I can build myself some wire harnesses to interface with these uh, various systems uh, on the car and uh, maybe hack them or enhance their functionality. I also got some more of these 10 uh, pin 1.27 millimeter pitch surface mount shrouded connectors and I use these on my uh, JTAG adapter board which I sell on Tindy. For those who don't know yet I have a Tindy store which I highly recommend you check out. I will link it on screen right now and you'll be able to order some of the past and future projects I will be making in limited quantities. It's funny how as soon as you go out of the uh, standard 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter pitch size connector, uh, it starts to be difficult to source these in small quantities and that complicates even more if you want them in a surface mount package. But I guess in the end it all ties back to the overall market demand for these products which must be lower than with the traditional through hole connectors. I got myself a set of 10 pieces insulation piercing probes with 4 millimeter sockets on their end. Personally, I already had two of these as part of a kit of probes and connectors and I love them. I haven't really used them for piercing insulation of wiring, but I have used them by plugging these thin needles into various uh, female connectors as sort of a universal uh, pin connection and that has worked really well for me especially in my uh, VW CAN bus hacking, hacking project so as you can see I can insert them like this they make perfect contact with the female connector uh, inside of this uh, shroud and then I can connect this to uh, whatever a CAN bus uh, interface or a multimeter because you often don't have the specific connector you find on these automotive modules or on the wiring harness but having these uh, thin needle connectors can be a uh, universal way of connecting to pretty much uh, any female uh, connector those two pieces I had previously were not enough so that's why I got a set of 10. Now I should have plenty and these as you can see come in a variety of colors which is nice. I'll put a link to these in the description below so you can check them out. Next I have a couple of tools here. Uh, this is a set of flukes or countersink drill bits and I'm not really sure what the correct naming is on these. Maybe you can let me know in the description below. But the plan here is to use them for creating these uh, countersunk holes on the surface of a panel held in with some screws, for example. I do mechanical work pretty rarely, but I almost always drill holes and almost always want to use countersunk screws. So these should help me to do that for future projects. And these are most certainly of questionable quality, but like I mentioned many times before, they will be rarely used. They will be used on soft metals or plastic. So it doesn't make sense for me to invest and get the expensive stuff since they will mostly be sitting in my toolbox unused. And the second tool here is this uh, quick release bit holder. And I'm hoping this will uh, help me when I need to put some screws using the electric drill by holding the screw uh, captive on the end and I'm sure these are also available at the local hardware store but I just couldn't be bothered to make a trip and search for it so I ordered one online. Um, I'm gonna try to give this a, a quick try just to see how it works. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it properly but please let me know in the comments if I'm not doing this uh, properly. So let's use this as a uh, POSI uh, number two drive. We'll put this in here and then you add the screw and I suppose you need to adjust this by bringing it closer to the screw head so that the the magnet on the hand so that the magnet on the end keeps the uh, the screw pretty much attached so yeah there's only a small gap in there and the screw is firmly attached like you could use it like this, but then I don't see how you would 
would have to screw this back in in order to remove the bit and switch to a different bit so at least with this model doesn't look like it's it's spring loaded in any way to allow uh you know a quick release of that so it looks like you're gonna have to screw this down to be able to remove the the bit also i don't understand why there are two pieces in here there must be some functionality why they allowed for this uh, two-piece design something that i'm not figuring out right now but i'm sure some of you guys know about this stuff and will let me know in the comments next i have this esp32 power over ethernet board which has been sitting on my desk for a while and i remember andreas peace took a closer look at something like this in one of his videos i have that on my watch later list but i haven't managed to find the time to watch that video so far so if you want to learn more about this board i highly recommend you search for his video myself i've been wanting to check out a poe power development board for a while and it just happened to uh, find this ESP32 one because I've been doing a bunch of projects on the ESP32 lately and so it made sense to check this out. So to explain a little bit why I'm interested in PoE, well this starts with the idea of having various IoT nodes spread around the building, different rooms, maybe different floors. Maybe having those based on the ESP32 will work fine in 90% of the locations in the building, but in 10% of the nodes, uh, you'll probably get low signal coverage issues because they might be behind too many concrete walls or too far away from the wireless access point. So in that case, it makes sense to uh, have some of those nodes wired. And PoE might be a good idea if you already have PoE-based network in your building, you might get both power and network connectivity through the same wire so i got this board to kind of experiment with that and have this uh, building block that i could test right away on an existing network i will also be getting one of those generic 24 volts passive poe injectors like uh, the ones from ubiquity i see that they're pretty cheap and commonly available so if you're also interested in poe development I recommend you check out this board which i will link in the description below together with this board i also ordered the optional usb to serial upload board which is nothing more than a usb to serial adapter with the uh, required io0 and enable reset signals controlled via transistors but i wanted to have a, uh, a plug and play solution for this board i believe it connects to this header and finally a small warning about this uh, this board first of all there are uh, at least a couple of uh, versions i have version 1.0 here and it, it seems like there are a few hardware changes between these two versions and depending on the firmware stack that you plan to use uh, it might or might not work as a plug and play solution or you'll need to adjust the uh, uh, some hardware definitions to match the hardware revision that you plan to use so keep an eye on, on on that and also a small warning is that the seller where i got this describes it as an equipment with a, a v rover module but instead it comes with a v room module without ps ram if that matters to you just ask the seller before placing the order and confirm what you're getting i stumbled upon these weird looking toothpicks when i was browsing on aliexpress but seriously now these are not toothpicks uh, these are cleaning picks for various electronics like smartphones and i have an iphone and dust tends to gather in the tiny microphone uh, or speaker or lightning holes and you might not want to clean those with something metallic like a pair of tweezers because it might scratch the case of the phone so these wood picks would probably work better for that purpose they also have this very thin layer of uh, presumably cotton on the on their ends to help with cleaning and they are fairly cheap so uh, well worth getting a set of these if you plan to do any gadget repair or cleaning operations Next, because I plan to build a project for atomizing a particular cleaning liquid, I ordered this ultrasonic mist maker module which comes with the electronics and the piezo element specifically designed for mist making type products. And this is a 20 millimeter piezo and the driver puts out a 113 kHz signal. The operating voltage is 3.7 to 12 volts. It 
I will probably be running this close to its maximum rated voltage to get the most out of it. And the specs say rated power is 2.5 watts and normal usage is 1.5 watts. So I would also have to be careful not to overload this. Um, I wouldn't want to destroy it. And I'm hoping this will produce more mist than the average $5 humidifier that you can get on AliExpress. Those usually run on 5 volts, so I kind of expect this to be better than that. If this doesn't work out as well as I expected to, I also ordered a 25mm piezo element which seems a bit beefier. And this one has a, a rated voltage of 12 volts and a resonant frequency of 1.7 megahertz which seems pretty far from the 113 kilohertz of the uh, driver board i showed previously but i will have to investigate that further this one is more like a spare part replacement for many commercial humidifiers so i expect this to be a more capable unit when paired with the appropriate driver circuit and these are the last two items for today's video I have here a current transformer with a 2000 to 1 ratio up to 20 amps input range and a 3000 volt isolation rating. With that ratio at 20 amps on the input you would get 10 milliamps on the output which you would need to connect to an amplifier to uh, convert to voltage and further do some measurements. I also got this uh, ready to go module with the transformer as well as the amplifier so you get a voltage on the output that you can easily measure with your favorite microcontroller. Uh, I know this one is rated for up to 5 amps but I'm not sure if the ratio on the output voltage I'll have to check that with a measurement. And these types of current transformers are great for uh, doing any kind of isolated measurements because all you have to do is to pass a wire like this through the uh, transformer. This will become the primary winding of this uh, transformer and it is galvanically isolated from the secondary, hence the advantage of an isolated measurement. And this is how you can have an Arduino measure the uh, current going through mains wiring. Although I wouldn't recommend you start building such projects if you don't know what you're doing. There is still a high risk of electrical shock if the mains wiring is not handled properly. But these modules do exist and will allow you to do those kinds of measurements. This was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch and you found something useful to order in this video. By the way, let me know in the comments if you ordered something you saw in this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to keep these videos coming. I will also place a uh, playlist on screen with all of the other mailbag videos so you can check it out. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.